That hero becomes a liability, but I feel like Skyroth is also a liability if you got pushed down. I don't know, I, I think Liquid got him. Like, they kind of got away with the opening Necro, but then they ended up with Invoker and... So maybe that solves everything for Aster. <laughs> yeah, in a way. I, I don't believe in Invoker this patch. I really don't. Yeah. I have not seen anybody pull this hero off convincingly. Again, on paper, the Invoker is great here. Because the, the Quas Wex owns Darkseer. It's a hero they needed. Like, if this were an old Invoker patch, it's, an, it's a top S tier pick. Like, all of his Invoker spells and scalability here with the draw behind him are amazing. Because he gives you the tempo in the early game with Quas Wex Tornado, Dispelling Shell, and EMP being really annoying for Aster. And then late game, he's going to get buffed up by Drower and just be swinging like a truck into these kind of low armor cores outside of the Morphling. You're super happy with that if you're, if you're liquid. But is this an Invoker patch? I don't, I don't think so. So he's kind of just gimped by the patch notes. So that's going to be something for Nisha to overcome here. And yeah, I think Aster's draft is more straightforward, but I do think if this game goes a bit late, then Liquid are favored with the Drow Invoker eventually kicking in with Necro Sustain. It's going to be awkward. Skyrath Mage, they did do a ranged hero with the Darkseer, but against Undying, <laughs> it works very well, and they're going to be able to get first blood for X6S. So it would already pay. Wow, okay. Just made it look easy there. Level 1. Do not often see Undying dying level 1, but he will. And that is to a Dark Seer lane, so very happy with that. And this is actually something I thought Aster were going to do, is put the Skyrath up here, because I think the waves 1 through 5, so about the first 2.5 minutes for the Breaker Dark Seer, are pretty bad versus the Undying. You pretty yeah. much have to pull, which is never that good, honestly. Um, but I think the like minute 3 on is really good for the Dark Seer Breaker. So in theory... Why not put the Skyrath up here to help you win the early ways for Darkseer, and then just put Breaker through the gate around the three minutes, get a gank off, or just put it put it up there, and you can even just switch the Skyrath to the bottom. Uh, yeah, I think that's my favorite part about playing Spirit Breaker right now, when you play it support, is just go through the gate, instantly charge. Once you're on the there other you side of the gate, you're behind them, uh, especially if you're playing in the safe lane, and you move to the opposing safe lane you're automatically behind the carry. It feels like a great position to be in. It's one of the things that made Undying first pick. Yeah. Uh, it's the fact that the Undying gate gank is one of the strongest for an early support. Yeah, the Basically. behind the back tombstone. Yeah. That like, is like, oh, what, no. do you, what do you do versus that, right? And since these kills are worth more, they, they pay off. So that is one of the reasons we're seeing these melee supports come back a little. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the Elder Titan that we've seen LGD play a lot. One of the early moves that LGD does with that Elder Titan is they send him through the gate. Sometimes with the spirit across the map, but sometimes just even without it is enough. That aspect I like for these melee fives. I think it's going to bring some of them back if you can hook up that rotation. But that rotation is also kind of dependent on putting your safe laner position where he can be self-sustaining. And I don't know if that's on the table for Insania here. Like, this lane is constantly going to get shoved in. The dive potential is there on Demike in the early game. So it's probably going to be a static laning phase for Liquid, but so far they're pretty happy with that as they have taken a lead in all three CSs. Yeah, Mickey in particular is being a bit of a dick. 11 denies. That is punishing a Darkseer pick heavily. So it's a good thing they got that first blood because they're, they're certainly losing out on the CS in that top lane. Hey, do you think Morphling's answered? That's what I feel like right now. This meta is all about whether or not you can answer Morphling appropriately. Do you have the answer to this hero or not? Because I think it's the strongest carry in the patch right now. So, do you think that uh, Liquid has an answer to the Morphling, and do you think the Invoker is good against him? I do think they have the answers eventually, yes. But it's dependent on Drow getting farmed and being able to stand her ground, which is a big question. Because you can Morphling Ag steal Drow and remove a lot of Agi attack speed. And yes, Mickey will clean up the zero armor of Evoca here. That Tombstone is still effective. Like, in theory, Liquid's lineup answers the, the Morphling, but yeah, as you said, Morphling seems to just not care about a lot of these matchups if he gets to his items. I mean, for me, I felt like their draft was, like, hyper-focused on countering Morphling, right? Like, Necrophos is a, a huge counter to that hero because, you know, the hero obviously plays around being able to go into max strength, so percentage-based damage, like, that is really good. And then the Drown Ranger just cuts through your armor if you're full agile. So it's kind of like you've covered both the full Agi Morphling and the full Strength. Nice. It's definitely nice. Nisha will get popped here off of the Boko rotation. We saw Boxy take down Pichu earlier. Nice little solo kill for him on the clock. Yeah, 
That's nice. That is a lot of extra solo XP going towards the Keen Goblin here. Yeah, uh, support that really likes to be able to get to that fast level three. Ooh, Zai. Much more of a damage threat, but Zai is, uh, they just need the adaptive strike. They need the vision for it. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, man, that's rough. He even dropped a ward to try and get the vision sooner. Oh, Sunstrike. Ooh, close call. Close I mean, call. you have Sunstrike Rocket Flare. That's all you're going to have to think about this game. There's yeah. like a lot of random global damage that can come through on this warp who's going to very low HP. That one will also miss. So Monet gets away as Zai will have to walk the base. Did go earn. He's going Vessel on the Necro to also help deal with the morph and the sustain here. It's going to be pretty nice. I think Aster are looking for one or two more ganks on this Invoker if they can get him. This is an x or Invoker, not that Quaswex. As Tombstone drop, not dropped actually. They just Dark. did not get the blood grenade scared. killed off. And here's that gate rotation from Pichu. A little later than I would have expected top, but if they can still connect it on the Drow, they're going to be happy with it. Here comes the charge into the Ion Shell, which he has a second Ion Shell already ready to go. Yeah, and they've got the Surge to be able to run him down underneath the tower if needed, but it's not. Now they'll deal with the Tombstone as well. At least Bobica uh, died, so they do get a bit of a trade-off. And it looks like they're pressuring the Morphling quite a bit. Probably not going to die, but is probably not going to get any CS while having a more strength this time. It's the downside of that gate gank, but I think this is worth it. Like, I think you're happy to trade some HP and a couple CS on Monet. If he doesn't get Sunstruck down to 2 HP. Dude. Dude, that's Pisha so close. Wishes his invoker was one level higher in this game. They will find the breaker, though. And this power thing, a lot of damage off the catapult. Got a coil on the invoker. Yeah, this is the second kill. That's Waiting out the leash, trying to run, but he's dead. Oh, man, this invoker's not having a fun one, even if the side lanes are being won by Liquid. Meanwhile, the carousel of destruction down here. Yeah, he just keeps on going round and round this tower. Trying to survive, trying to morph into more strength, but he's out. He's out of strength. This tower's dead. I mean, Aster found the ganks I was talking about, but they paid a very big price. Not dealing with this catapult bottom. Just stays there for two minutes. Slays a tier one for free, and you got earned charges on Zai, who's going to hit six off this wave as well. His Necro pick is doing enough work in the early game, that is for sure. And now a Sunstrike will connect and yield another kill. That. Level 6 now for the Necrophos at 7 minutes with the tower down. Zai is going to be really big this game. He is indeed. This is a hero he also likes to play, and I think fits his style well. Like, if I'm going to pick one offlaner to pick up to play a first phase Necro in the world, I feel like I'm probably taking Zai. Yeah. He does have a really good... Like, I think of Zai's strengths, I think of him as just being a guy who kind of, like, survives very well. Ooh, that silence was not timed that well. I think he will be able to gust his way out of there. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were talking about the, the gust. I was like, well, well, I thought that was pretty good timing. I mean, it's going to be important to remove this gust so that the charge can connect. Yeah. Even on the Invoker, too, like, remove the cold snap, remove some of these charge cancels. It's an important part of how Aster want to engage these fights. Eight minute power rune. Will be that shield run on Insane who drops unique high ground to stuff here. Yeah, I haven't seen that tombstone position before. The coil is gonna keep him around so they can get that kill. Tomb plus kill. A lot of gold. I mean, Sumail has definitely had more help this game than last time, and he is the reward pulling ahead of Nisha on that X or Invoker, but you would kind of expect this as well. I just don't know if the trade-off has been worth it. Like, Aster have paid a big price on their side lanes in devoting the resources mid here, as opposed to where Liquid just benefited on all three lanes from it last time. Yeah, I mean, the Necro... <clears throat> Excuse me. The Necropost doing so well is not going to play well with the Morphling. No, he's also going to be able to counteract some of these aggressive darts here moves. But if you get mid-tower off this, then I think you're okay with it if you're Aster. As long as you can man up and secure this objective, open up the space, and then at some point start combining with, with your Darks here and using his strength with the Breaker. Like, the Morph will do okay in the long here. And the thing they're is, trying. Zai does not want to stay bots. Zai wants to join these mid fights if Liquid can find them, because he went bots first on the Necro over that vessel. So this is like a farming map play item for Necro that helps him join the skirmishes, control the lanes, 
This is meant to counteract an early Darkseer dive or help Nisha on mid if they can keep the tier one up. Yeah. Just constantly keep the pressure on bottom lane and then still be available to rotate. That is the name of the game. They can find him, but Liquid are not finding him. They need the hook shot on Boxy. That's a lot of their initiation and skirmish power on Liquid. It's close, but not there yet. They need to prioritize that clock XP, get it going here. And then you can, you know, hook Cog into Sunstrike into maybe a Necrobot. That sounds pretty good. Then it'll be another coil. Keep finding these kills. Finish up that Witch Blade, they'll be pretty happy, but maybe the kill isn't so easy. Unable to get it, and they keep the ward alive by dropping the hammer on him. Oh, bot's paying off pretty fast here. Already gets a stack. Happy to join that fight. This will free up space for Monet. But they do have a catapult mid. I wonder if Liquid can make anything. Probably not. Yeah, not against the puck, I think. I like the bot's idea to defend your invoker this game. I think that concept is very important for Liquid. Like, do not let Nisha just get run at with this XR Invoker, because we've seen XR Invokers get mega abused going this Midas first build and trying to get there, and that's when their game really picks up. Oh, this kill would be very nice to have, but he does have a lot of Magic Wand charges in the turnaround, even. Hook shot on his male, trying to dodge. Fortunately, Monet is there to be able to clean up the kill on Boxy. A rhythm of that damage over time. Samael's still going to have some troubles, though, with Spirit Vessel coming in. Monet now going to be silent, worked into strength, but the Drow Ranger does so much damage. And a Sunstrike that was almost on the mark, but I think Samael somehow got the heads up about it. Yeah, that, was, that was a nice attempt. Very cool. going to try and return the favor on Zai. He is very tanky here. No Shroud for one, but he'll get up in time. A lot of Magic Wand charges once again. I actually don't know if that Shroud helped it. Yeah, I think that Shroud does more damage to you than uh, you wanted to, and he'll barely tick out. XXS will get the last hit, and Pichot well, might even be able to get away with his ultimate. Never mind. That was, uh... Yeah, he did not have Death Pulse. I think that Shroud might have killed him there. Yeah, yeah. He gave away the Streak kill, too. That went to XXS. That is a 500 gold base kill with the 5x Streak. So Darkseer living the life there. That'll help get him to the eventual pipe, though. He's got to go mech first. And that is going to be the big green light for Ashes game. The auras on the Darkseer. Like, what can they get done with the mech with the pipe to counteract the greed coming out from Liquid? Because you have Exor, Midas, and Ogre farming up the map right now. The clock is ticking. Another Reaper attempt. That one, not quite enough damage to get the kill by itself. So he'll miss out on the stack. Gets the kill, and if they can kill Samael too, which is stuck. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. He committed both of his nukes earlier, so Boxy took full <laughs> opportunity to shut him down. Yeah, his Necro pick has looked very strong. Just given a free laning phase with this Morphling matchup, and the early bots means he can join all these fights. Six and one for Zai. Takes a tier one bottom and is looking towards his tier one mid and almost <laughs> has Vessel done on top of everything. It's gonna be so much damage. I remember I played a game, I played a pub versus Thompson. I know, oh, I can love Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> I can't mention Did somebody that. say Thompson? <laughs> I played a pub versus Radiant Thompson Necro who went Vessel Rush off of mid into like the fast shard. Yeah. It's so much damage on the chase down with like the amp from the shroud, just going in with max aura of Vessel Charge and getting hit with the double death pulse or whatever. You just die. You just flat out die. Now it does fall kind of into a valley. Like after that, sure. You have to pick it up later. That's the part of that build I don't like. But right now, as this vessel gets delivered, does I at the 13 minute mark? He's a god. He is a god on the map, and it is going to surprise Aster how much burst this really does. As Sunstrike connects a bit there, you will find another pick off with the clock. So I, I like this necro build. I think this is exactly what I wanted out of the, the pick. They got away with the first phase necro, which is pretty rare in Dota historically. And that bodes really well for Liquid, because they have Drow, Exhort, and Boker just farming the map right now. Scaling versus Warfling. I don't know, it feels like Aster's in a bit of trouble here, unless they can pick up this mid-game at a very strong tempo and use the Darkseer auras, and get to that point where Puck is scaling on par with this Exhort and Boker. Then your late game is okay, right? Late game Puck is pretty Dyer's scary this game. It can be a terrifying force. Yeah, but is it scary oh, enough? Early Reaper into the Gust setup. You're gone, son. Nice catch. At the same time, they're going to go for the Glockwork as he was trying to steal away the Wisdom Rune. Did I see that right? Did they get both Wisdom Runes? Uh, yes, they did on Aster. Yeah. Nice little steal from Provoke on the other side of the map. So extra XP going into their supports. 
not the biggest factor here, but they'll take it as the lead is starting to build for Liquid. Another big puck pickoff. And that, that's actually an interesting interaction that Sumail's going to have to think about this game. Like the early Reaper throw. The Reaper into the Sunstrike. Yeah, into the Gust, into the Clockwork Hookshot, into the Sunstrike. It's a surprising amount of bursts that can come out. That you're not... You don't want to have to play around him throwing a Reaper on you at full HP. Yeah. It's like, well, you can't play around that. They're going to get a charge on Mick Gay. But he will Gust it away, and now he gets a turn. Yeah, get a lot of damage, get a free kill on Spirit Breaker, and XXS whiffs the vacuum. And he's actually stuck in a nasty position. He's got to use his Surge to get away. But that leaves Samael kind of awkward spot. Three-man coil. Bobico coming in, though, does provide the damage to almost kill the Clockwork. Does manage to get it, actually, with the Drow Ranger illusion, but Boboka is going to be caught by the Tornado, brought down by Mickey. So once again, Liquid able to defend their own and return fire to get kills. I really like how Mickey's playing this game. He has been so active in these fights with the early Hurricane Pike and just joining every engagement. And it matters. It matters a lot. It helps Liquid swing all these engagements. I mean, there he got charged, but I think he's happy to join these fights because he has the bot Necro to join, but he also has this Invoker who Liquid should be confident in to pick up that scale. It's going to be that, like, hybrid right-click that we seen from Misha before. This drum into Solar Crest. This is a pretty interesting build. He, he did this when they played it a while back, and of course this single target physical when you buff up the Forge Spirits with this drum charge with Midas attack speed and the Solar Crest on top of all the Minus armor is pretty crazy. So you're not losing too much in terms of your short-term physical damage here, especially with Drower on top of all of it. But it also is going to enable Roshan to just melt the liquid here if they are ever in a position to do it. That will they be able to do it as uh, Zai is going to die here, and I think a push from Aster to secure this tower, and that'll help rid the control of Roshan a little bit. Looks like they may lose their mid tower for it. That is the other upside of the build. You just let the four spears do the work with the drum. They're also doing all the work when it comes to the uh, power rooms as well. Uh, Samael has had a very hard time getting power rooms against this invoker because he keeps on sending the forge spirits to the sides and you know he doesn't need the power rune so he just works to deny them away from Sumail. Uh, it's, it's been very nice micro here from Nisha and it, all these little things have paid off for Liquid as they built to a 3k lead versus a lineup that really wanted to build some advantage early off the lanes and it's just not found a lot. Puck has been shut down, the charges are difficult to connect, but Boca playing in these open areas versus Clock with the Sun Strikes has been a death sentence as he will get hook shotted again. He's gone. Good attempt with the four staff, but Mickey once again playing very aggressively, ready to join in on these fights. The male actually trying to come in and like punish with the rest of the rotations coming out, but they actually find that there's just too many heroes here from Liquid. So they have to just throw out a wall defensively, use their abilities to get away. Yeah, but what are you finding here if you're Aster? A whole it's lot of just, nothing. Your camp's being taken. That's all you're finding. Yeah. Here's the Solar Crest now complete, so... Yeah, like, look at how Nisha's farming him. It's just the Forge Spirits. He's never showing his hero. Takes you back to, like, the CI6 in Poker. So. Trying to burst down the Undying with a Mystic Flare. That's going to be enough. Now the Darks here. Reaper Scythe, good for staff to be able to help, but it doesn't save him. Show is in. Jeez, Coil on to three. I'm not sure what they expected out of this fight, but it was not what they thought it was. Monet is back in the Spear Breaker buyback, but I think he's just dead. Yeah, hook shotted, and with the Spirit Vessel, he's not going to last long. That was a total misread from Aster. They got Undyne, maybe he thought that was enough to take the fight, but it is not even close <laughs> as the physical damage just rains in early. The other upside of the Solar Crush drum is you throw that plus an alacrity on Mickey here, and he is just off to the races. 3,000 damage done at a... 18 minute fight from Drow is absurd. That is all the Invoker just attack. pumping it up. 3,000. Let's see, 4,400. Yes. Why is your number different than mine? I don't know. I mean, maybe didn't count Radiance one of the last kills or something. All right, well, my game is broken. 33 Exhorts, though. Wow. He's hitting that Exhort button a lot. He is spamming that X. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it showed that. <laughs> I didn't know it showed that. My game's really bugged. Boots of Bearing, by the way. This is a really cool invoker, but I like it this game. It's like really nice for his other cores. And you're
you're not losing too much single target burst anyway. Sure. Liquid continuing to hold Astro's Aries, and that is an Ags done for mid -game. Oh my god, he's so far. Hypophobia, the boss hero is already up. I mean, what are you doing in this game if you're Morphe? You're playing against Vessel, a Reaper Scythe if you ever get low, and then Mor Drow is just going to start getting Hypo stacks on you. I legit have zero faith in Astro's lineup play game. Yeah, because maybe Puck does scale, but the Morphling is like. The most countered I've seen a Morphling be countered in this tournament or last. So you're saying that Monet somehow carries this game off of Ags. That this hero is just absolutely broken. Yes, but I think we already knew that. But he would be more, even more broken than I thought. Okay, that's fair. And here's the Roshan that should go down incredibly fast. God damn! God damn! Yeah, that's some damage. These, these drow hits with a lacry on top, the tears, or something else, man. You're getting like three shot on the war. Yeah, you might get hit by the undying the damage champ. You're getting all the, like you said, the buffs from the invoker. It's pretty cool stuff. I wonder if there's a way for Monet to get plus armor in this game easily, but I don't really see. That was ambitious. It was ambitious. He's going to fail. He's going to give Zion another Reaper Scythe stat. Why not? I think they're very comfortable with this game. The way he just threw that yes. Scythe down. Like, he wanted the stack. He knows that's a free kill. But he's not afraid of Aster. They don't need Scythe to fight. Yeah. The fights are just about getting a positioning set up where the Drow and the Invoker are too far back for Aster to gap for And then the fight's over. Honestly, that's it for Liquid. Yeah. So we all got the last hit mid. Nice little team play. I don't know if he'll survive. I think you wish that you had that Reaper's Scythe right now. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. They did get a uh, double Wisdom Roots again. Oh, that Sunstrike. That was Ooh. nasty. Meanwhile, oh, fight top. They did fight Mickey. Never mind, Mickey found them. Yeah, unfortunately, the Boots of Travels are up. Yes, this was only two heroes up here, but thanks to the bots build on Zai, it makes a huge difference. Radiance top tower is under and keep in mind, this Drow Aura on the other two cords is going to make it tankier as well. Like, Drow Necro has always been a nice combination, because suddenly you have an int ranged offlaner that gets a bunch of armor. Mm, yeah, that is, that is a nice part. That goes back to that early Drow Ranger strat from Wings game, where you, like, they were the ones who started that Puck offlaner with the Drow. Attack. For the same reason. Yeah. Like, Puck with all the armor and the control. Two man back in the wall. Okay, that's pretty good with that charge on through, but not enough to burst any heroes. And I think once they fail to burst a hero, the stack. fight gets a lot harder. Oh, Pichot's not going to live. Tombstone zombies chasing him down. Nisha goes down to half health. His eyes in the base. Is he really? I mean, you stuck behind the gate, my friend. This oh. is a bold move. What is he doing here? Is there any punish? If you can't punish this, then just go next. Nice Sunstrike once again. Doesn't get the kill because it was tanked between the two of them. But yeah, I think Zai is uh, he's out. That's he's good. He had no PKB. <laughs> and he's going to take the Tormentor. A little shard for Insania. So now there's Grab Ally for Skyrathult or a Coil. Anything else in the game that might have given Aster a chance to go for? Yeah, that uh, really is dwindling. I mean, you just I mean if you can't out. kill him off of that vacuum, charge off the vacuum with the waveform over the top. Like, if you can't kill one of those cores, then your damage has run out. That's it. I don't see it. I had it. Yeah. Agatum Scepter, how much does that change for Morphling this game? I mean, it is really good on the Drow Ranger, right? He becomes a Drow Ranger with Hypothermia stacks. It is good. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the Ag's Warp is still going to be strong if you can get it on the ground. Look at this impact blink. Or wait. Here comes that blink. Whoa! Clutched it perfectly. Later, nerds. And later, Monet. First Reaper Scythe on the Morphling. It's enough. It does do enough. Death tax. And the BKBs are up for Liquid. So now you can begin high ground attempts. Pretty much invincible here on all three of their cores. There is not a lot through BKB. 
That is a downside of these Darkseer lineups if you do not snowball early. I mean, XXS is honestly still an okay game. There was just no snowball. And he is 5 and 1. He does not feel like it. Liquid knowing they're ahead, knowing that it is very hard for Aster to fight them. They're just gonna force down a lane of barracks, it looks like. The Morphling's coming back up, but are they really gonna stop? They still have 30 seconds left on the Aegis after all. Might as well push for the melee. Nice silence. Yeah, those Ooh, better really wall great response. Beautiful wall with the charge on through on four heroes as well, but again. Limited on the damage. Pichot probably gonna die for this one as Zai blinks in aggressively to be able to get that kill. Got nothing off that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, Samael, I think he maybe already used some of his spells. Wasn't able to combo off of the charge. He was getting harassed by the clock, and yeah, he just wasn't able to get in there with a coil of silence. I think maybe he could take the fight off that. Otherwise, Big K just clears through all these illusions. He's doing way too much damage. Hypothermia is going to help with those pops and just split the arrows. And that is a Rax down. Didn't even have to commit BKBs here. All three still up for Liquid off that push. I don't know. There has to be something to help XXS on these follow-ups. He's actually finding the openings, but... There's just no damage. I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it, but I do feel like that's a communication issue, right? If XXS sees opportunities to go in, you have to be there to follow up if you're Samael, right? I mean, in that scenario, the follow-up is it's not going to win you the fight, but at least you have potential to, like, get the BKBs out, and then you can maybe kill them on the return or something. Yeah, or at least kill, like, the support. There was one support that was stuck in there, probably the Undying, yeah. I guess. Like, you got to be able to pop something and force Liquid away. Still, Ags will be finished for Monet. I mean, if this game's going to turn around, it's going to be off this item. Okay, you're gonna have to find the Drow, I think. I don't think any other Ag steal. I mean, you can steal an Undyne and drop a Tombstone, but I don't think it's doing anything in this fight. I don't think the Liquid's lineup cares about it, so it's pretty much just Drow or Bust. I mean, multi-shot with that same vacuum charge combo yeah. now you would be pulse. sick. I agree, especially if you can land Silence Coil and you chain the stun before they get PKB off, even better. The Clump will be punishing here if Liquid are not aware of it. Oh, me. And Aster just gonna aggressively smoke, so they know this is their window back in the game. They're gonna try and hit it. And they'll find Nisha just in mid lane, sleeping or what? Does manage to get him with the ult, the coil on it too afterwards. The BKB immediately goes off. They get the kill on Boxy before getting away. Maybe not getting away. Pichot's gonna be slowed down, forced down, trying to get him out. Nice use the invis here, but it is gonna be a problem. Do manage to get the vacuum into the wall, but they finish off Pichot and the rest of Aster is walking away. So again, the wall not doing enough here. Samael trying to combo off of it, but the Undying looks like he's, he's going to live. Samael may actually end up dying for it. Face shift. Can't get it. He needs to be able to get off. Yeah, he was waiting for his orb because his blink dagger was still on cooldown. So he had to wait to orb and then phase shift, and that was just too much. Well, Monet farmed 25 minutes for an Ag. He went in that fight. He casted it on Mickey, and Mickey had a Lincoln's and broke it, and the Irish are more playing impact. So back to farm. <laughs> that was very sad. That was extremely sad. I mean, yeah. that just says how far Vika is in this game. That he had a fourth item Lincoln's come out at the time the Warplane had a second item Ag. Gold wins you games. Pretty here first. Incredible. Yeah. 7,000 net worth ahead. Yeah, I guess that is two whole items ahead. And you know, gold wins you a lot in life too. Let that be the lesson of the day. If you want to win something, whether it be F1 or the NBA or the Olympics, just have more money. Yeah, you, uh, you heard it from SVG, everybody. Put all of your uh, investments into gold. <laughs> no, that, Sell your I stock. I not pretend to be a financial advisor, nor do I get financial Get rid of advice. crypto Bode. straight for gold. I need some Bode. life advice. Oh, he's going to need some help here. The vacuum's not going to be good enough. He's dead. No buyback. And that's probably it. Could not get any impact out of the Aghanim Smorfling. I mean, at least Peachy got the message. You know, he's got the shadow I'm doing. It's like, I don't know what you guys are doing. Oh, they got but, the uh, dust, they found it. Oh, no. Okay, well, at least he tried, you know? He did.